All right, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest. Make sure you guys click that subscribe button. Give me a like, hit the uh, bell, you know, support the channel. We really appreciate it. Today on To the Fullest with Jason Froberg, we have Joanne and Marcy from the Unicorn Lens Podcast. How are you doing yes. today? Great. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm getting uh, nice and caffeinated today. Mm -hmm. I was... Uh, I was up late doing install work, so uh, <laughs> this is my lifeline for the podcast today. You're all fancy with mm -hmm. your your espresso baby <laughs> baby drink there. Oh, I love the espresso. It is a <laughs> lifesaver. Yeah. Yeah. I try to stay away from it, but uh, I, I'm on uh, a little slow. We were out to about 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning doing install work what? last night. So, oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, it was... Uh, nap time. Yeah, it's, it's soon. Soon nap time will be coming. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, but how are you doing today? You guys do the uh, the Unicorn Lens podcast. I really yeah. enjoyed it. Angela and I were listening to a couple episodes. We were listening to the uh, the flower episode, the flower therapy. <laughs> yeah, have you ever heard of such a thing? I have not. I like the uh, pictures. They had you uh, covered in flowers. Yeah, doing the... I was doing a flower blessing, flower therapy. That's awesome. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. It's kind of like crystals, you know, clearing out the chakras and stuff, so... Yeah, we learned something new. Yeah. So what? Uh, so what got you involved with doing the uh, the Unicorn Lens podcast? Well, Joanne, <laughs> you want to take that? Or? It's something that we had talked about like years before because we just have these conversations and we just wanted to share. Like we have so much fun talking to each other, and so we thought, why not? And also, it's something that um, we both are not crazy about speaking in public <laughs> and so he thought well this might be some good practice just to get out there do something messy just have some fun yeah that's awesome so uh yeah you're both getting into being uh life coaches right right is that what yeah. really got you started on the yeah. uh, the whole podcast ideas that you're doing the life coach thing well we have a couple podcasts that we've followed over the years and we just thought we have these conversations all the time. <laughs> so why aren't we sharing our story and, you know, inviting everybody to our party? And we decided to both become life coaches and thought this was a good way for us to practice, you know, getting our voice out there and getting comfortable, you know, speaking in front of people, you know, practice, practice playing the part. <laughs> That's how you do it. So... That's awesome. So how does one become a life coach these days? Is there a class or a certification you get or um, what, what's the whole uh, protocol for that process? Yeah, well, Joanne and I um, did different schools, so we decided to do about the same time. But I went to school at the life coach school. That's where I got my certification. And it's um, their training is a little different than Joanne's. Yeah, I started last July, and and I finished up in April. I got my certification, and interestingly enough, when I started looking into it, um, there's no really uh, hard requirements to become a life coach. So you, yeah. you know, anybody could call themselves a life coach, and um, but you know, if you really want to learn some stuff. Uh, pick a school and they have all different kinds of lengths of time you know I've heard one where it was like one week crammed in there um, but yeah it's it's not really that regulated of a field yet yeah so. well it's kind of like if you're at the gym and you want somebody to show you how to train your body you can just ask anybody to train you know <laughs> how to train your, ask them how to train your body and have them kind of coach you along. And life coaches like that just with your brain. So anybody can say that, but, y yeah, you yeah. know, the training that I've received is more specific to what speaks to me, right? And it was important for me to find something that matched, you know, my thinking. And Joanne's, that's why she picked the school that she chose as well. It matched her way of thinking too and so we are both certified but you don't actually need a certification to claim like a, be a life coach that's awesome so yeah 
That's awesome. Yeah, I had um, classmates who we were just, you know, one third of the way through school and and they started uh, working and charging. And so I was like, oh, and I was like, could, I, could we do that? And so <laughs> I was a little nervous about doing that, but I was like, I looked it up and there's no nothing to stop one from doing that. So I was like, oh, OK, I, I could. I, I didn't, but I could have. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's cool. So is that doing well after the uh, the COVID pandemic and all that? You guys are starting to really pick up the uh, some life coaching clients. Yeah, I think that's people are really interested in that, yeah. <laughs> especially past this this past year has made everybody start looking on the inside, and you know that's why we decided to do this the unicorn lens. It's all about you know living your best life, giving yourself permission. For some reason, we need somebody to give us permission to, like, do whatever we want. We just follow this path of what we should do, even if it's not really what we want to do. But, you know, pays the bills. Yeah. Or, you know. I know that struggle. You know, but why not follow your dreams? Why not follow that path and make money doing it? Or, you know, just live 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 your life the way you want it no <laughs> rules no rules yeah I think what pushed me towards uh the coaching is I was re really looking for something that I could do uh and be traveling so you know uh, we both were massage therapists with with Angela um same place and so you know that kind of job it's it's a great job you know very fulfilling but as I'm getting older I had been thinking about, well, you know, how long can I do that? So I had been thinking about transitioning anyway before COVID. And and I realized I want to be able to do something where I could travel, be traveling and still be working and, and making an income. So that's kind of when I found yeah. this coaching stuff. I, I had actually seen somebody who was an expat coach. Okay. So... Yeah, coaching people who live in other countries. Yeah. I'm like, oh, there's such a thing. You'd be surprised at what kind of coaching there is. Marcy <laughs> yes. is, the yeah, the dream coach. Oh yeah, so, yeah. What does a what does a dream coach entail? Well, it's you know the the person who thinks, well, who am I to do you know whatever? Yeah. So I just help you. Give yourself permission <laughs> to, <laughs> to live the life of your dreams. So like Joanne was saying, that's something that I want to do too is, you know, take my job with me. So we do have this plan, which the unicorn lens is kind of mapping our way to that. So we have this plan of being in Italy in March and April, working from our little place in Italy and, you know, coaching from Italy. That's beautiful. Right? I love the whole world travel concept. I'm trying right. to do the same thing with my, yeah. my my YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Well, you have this big yeah. dream and you think, that's impossible. So you take the impossible and make it possible because, you know, you take, how do you believe something that you don't believe yet? Yeah. You just practice. Well, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have plans for Italy already? You guys starting to make uh, everything work out? You going over there to yeah. do some specific life coaching for people? Or are you going over there to, what, shoot some, some videos and do some more of the uh, unicorn lens stuff? We'll hopefully do some of that, yeah. But yeah. hopefully we'll have clients set up. And really we do, well, I do my coaching over Zoom. Okay. Or, you know, you can do it over the phone. Joanne's. I do both, yeah. Yeah, Joanne's son a little bit phone yeah and you can take that with you anywhere I and mean, we can right. go to china we get there's <laughs> yeah. no end and so kind yeah. of another we're kind of thinking we'd love to do a retreat okay you know where people can come and um you know do yoga or have healthy you know eating and have coaching available to you know therapies so that's still kind of developing and so you know, when we go to Italy, so hopefully we'll have clients and then we're also going to be maybe scoping some things out, you know, so. Yeah, for a retreat. Future, future retreat. Yeah. <laughs> the retreats are really fun. I'm, have, I'm looking forward done? to doing some. 
Have you done a retreat before? Uh, no, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to uh, doing some with the, uh, the Zen monastery that I just joined. They're starting to do retreats. I've been, always wanted to do um, Vipassana meditation retreat out in Massachusetts. They have the Vipassana school. Oh. And then, uh, yeah, we're plan- they're, they're planning on doing some now that the COVIDs are, mm-hmm. are starting to wrap up. I'm really looking yeah. forward to it a lot. Yeah. So, That's awesome. Yeah, it's going to be nice. It's going to be real nice. Getting rid of the mess and and starting to get back to reality. Right. So it's I'm just I'm just glad I'm uh, starting to work again. Like it's been right. so long, you know, doing the entertainment industry and everything like that. So right, I know everybody's starting to get back to work and feeling a little normal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, today yeah. was the first day that I actually. Uh, could go into places without my mask. Isn't that great? And it felt weird at first, but then I was like, oh, it feels so good. Where Where did you go? I went I went to the Crepe Expectations. Without for, a mask? Without a mask. Uh, without a mask. And How people, beautiful is that? Some people were wearing masks, some people were not. And then I went to uh, shopping at Kohl's and same thing. Really? Some people were wearing masks, some people were not. And I always look at and Whole Foods. I look at the sign first to see, do I need a mask or not? Because, yeah, green and, greens and proteins or proteins and green, whatever that place, yeah. Yeah. they still wanted you to have a mask. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that yet except at the gym. Oh, so yeah. when I went to the gym and I could actually get on the treadmill without oh. a mask. <laughs> I, I, can run, I can run like three times faster <laughs> now without the mask. <laughs> Just kidding. But it's so much better without the mask. That's the oh, only yeah. place I've been without a mask, though. Yeah, yeah. So was that just today? Like, Well, or, I haven't really been out. Hmm. <laughs> I don't go out, the, out of That's the house really that much. really exciting. Yeah. I think the second that they uh, they said uh, we're going to allow people to start we- stop wearing masks that have been vaccinated on June 1st. Everyone Everybody just, went to get a vaccine. <laughs> screw it. Yeah, we're just <laughs> throwing the masks away. Uh, like, I know. Like graduation. Uh, Woo! Yes. Yeah. Yes. Finally, I free. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 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 uh it's definitely a fresh breath of fresh air, or literally a <laughs> totally. breath of yes. fresh air, right? Totally. <laughs> yes. To to you know finally yeah. start stepping on the other side of this thing. I'm just super happy about it. Yeah, me too. Uh, me and we too. get back to some good concerts, good right? shows. Oh, I, I want miss that some, so much. I want to see some live music so badly. Oh, yeah. So badly. There's a lot of good events coming up, so we're I'm um, I'm really excited about it. And hopefully, some of the tickets that we paid for pre-COVID, uh, all right. Well, those con- those shows will actually come back. Right. So I think I'm actually wearing my I got a Letterkenny shirt on right now. Uh, we what, had tickets to Letterkenny. Oh. I don't know okay. if you know Letterkenny. No, I don't. There's a comedy show. They got it on Hulu. It's great. It's Canadian. Oh, yeah. They were coming down doing kind of a rare comedy thing. Everyone was real stoked about it. They've never done it before, and then it got kiboshed. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, I think, I think everybody has a story like that, yeah. you know? They had something. We had this dream camp we were going to. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they got canceled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's, a, what's a dream camp entail? Well, you know, learning how to... Follow your dreams. Yeah, yeah. So one of the <laughs> one of the podcasts that we listen to is um, the Sherry and Nancy show, and uh, so they are the ones that kind of inspired us to kind of do our do the podcast as well because they talk about all the things we like to talk about, yeah. and they were going to have a um, camp Dream. three day three day camp at I don't know fourteen forty diversity something up in California Santa Cruz Mountains or something, and so yeah. So their their demographics is mostly, you know, older women that are maybe making a life change, you know, switching careers, you know, something like that. So we were looking forward to that. But yeah. Yeah. But other stuff came up, you know, because of it. They canceled that. But Sherry, she used to be the executive producer of Oprah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she had written a book called The Beautiful No. And that's how we kind of got to know her. And then, so now she's doing her own um, course and support system and a whole thing. So there's so much coaching going on. I I feel like there's a big boom. Mm-hmm. Or is it one of those things where <laughs> you know when you buy the red car, then you see red cars everywhere? Yeah, right. I don't know if it's like the chicken or the egg. 
I think I, I think it's a little of both. I mean, a lot of people have been getting into the whole uh, self-reflective right? thing and uh, and really trying to find a different career path than mm-hmm. just working for somebody. So uh, yeah. I do think it's a little bit of both. But yeah, it's probably yeah. buying the red car and seeing the red <laughs> yeah. car concept as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I know. I've been. I personally got on the self-reflective path as well during the COVID mm-hmm. stuff, and really kind of found a, a nice uh, Zen place inside, as opposed to just going all the time. Right. I was really caught up in the uh, the game of life before this all went down. So I'm actually personally thankful, even though it, it was really a devastating thing for us to all go through. I'm I'm really grateful that we had the time to be self-reflective and right. and actually kind of take a step back from our lives for a little bit and, and, and find this, you know, center. I was able to find it. Anyways. That, I feel great. the same way. I like to start every year with a word for the year. And last year was my year of love. So I started searching for love everywhere I looked, you know, and I just felt like this is, this was meant to happen for me. Yeah. This whole last year was such a gift to me, really. Oh yeah, I uh, such a gift. I wouldn't have been able to do this this whole podcast thing if I hadn't had the time. I wanted to. It was always like part of the game plan, but it's like when when but am I going to do it? Isn't that huh. interesting? How it took something like this to give yourself permission to do what you want to do. Yeah, you always wanted to do it, and it took something big like this to push you to do what you wanted to do. Yeah. So did you start this um, when everything started shutting down, or were you you had started before? I uh, I was gearing up for it, and we were all kind of me and a few other people were setting up to do some online streaming and some podcasting and stuff like that for fun and then um we just never had the time being in the entertainment industry in las vegas it was like non-stop and so it's hard to turn down money to do something like this for fun and uh, as i know our, actually our first episodes were right around march oh. and right as right as COVID happened it was like whatever i went out and thankfully we were already we were game planning so i was able to just go pull the trigger now you know work starting to fa- fall off and I was able to get my hands on the gear, but like stuff like uh, like this video switcher and a lot of these different cards that I have for my computer, they just disappeared because I definitely wasn't the only person who thought I'm gonna be yeah, trapped inside. Right, I should get right. a stream going, <laughs> and uh, and even now to this day, like they've all doubled in price. Or I mean, if you look online for like building computers, video cards, graphics cards. Mm-hmm. Um, little little switchers and video stuff like they've all doubled if not more in price wow. and they're they're not even making new ones i think they might start making new yeah. ones now because yeah. things are coming back online but it got crazy i was really grateful that i was able to uh get it established first look at that everything always works out for you yeah well <laughs> in the end you know hindsight well see and, that's that's really what it is yeah. right the story's never over you <laughs> just let it. it play out yeah. Wait, wait for what comes next. So, you know what? What I had a hard time finding? Huh. Sidewalk chalk. Sidewalk chalk? Because everybody oh, was yeah. like <laughs> playing with their families at home. Yeah. <laughs> Drawing on the sidewalks. You know, bubbles. You can find bubbles. That's you know, funny. Like, you can make your own bubbles. Yeah, didn't you make your own chalk or I something? I did. I started making my own sidewalk chalk. How do I you couldn't do that? Bu- well, with, you know... Chalk, <laughs> baking powder, or something. I yeah, don't know was, what kind of powder. It's like plaster of Paris, and you know, you just make your own. <laughs> you go to Pinterest and get all the ideas. You know, you can learn how to do anything on YouTube. Oh yeah, right. That's how I learned how to do all this. Right? No way. YouTube. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, I just get, uh, and I do. I learn how to do other things for other people too. They go, "You got a studio? Can you do this for me?" And I go, "I could, yeah, sure, whatever." And then I just pull you up the YouTube page and. <laughs> I start watching yes. the tutorials and clicking one button at a time. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. So you can say, hey, you want to pay me to come set you up? Like for something they could just do. Just go yeah. search it on YouTube. <laughs> no, no, I'll do the research and I'll come do it for you. Yeah. Wow. I think people get uh, overwhelmed by certain things that they don't already know how to do. And they feel like I'll never be able to do that kind of thing. And so, I mean, that's great, greatly beneficial for me because I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'll figure it out for you real quick, you know, or uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that kind of deal. Or I already know how to do it and I'll go do it for you for, for money. 
but uh, I, I really feel like nowadays it's uh, it's just all this information is so readily accessible. It's such a beautiful right. thing. I know. And so many people giving great tutorials on YouTube, step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to right. do just about anything. Right. I mean, I took apart um, uh, an, an ex an ex girlfriend's car. <gasps> her her <laughs> car was just devastated. Whoa. She needed a total like all the seals needed to be replaced and like total overhaul of the engine. And I'm not a mechanic at all. Uh, and she was just like, "Well, I'm gonna have to get rid of the car. I can't afford a new one." And uh, so I just took two days and took it apart in my driveway, and it was all just my laptop. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll do this next thing here. And we took it apart, <laughs> put it back together. Oh, wow. that's and, awesome. Yeah, the Internet's amazing. And it was not like I, knew what I knew what I was doing, but I can follow one step at a time down a list. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, and that's the mindset, too, because I think sometimes I have a little bit of a block when it comes to technology. Like... <laughs> you know, trying to get the videos on YouTube or how to edit. And to me, before I even start, I think, oh, it's so, it's, it's such a big job. And that stops me. Whereas if I just said, I can figure it out. Yeah. Because it's step by step by step. So. Yeah. Well, we stop and we were like, I want somebody to show me how. But yeah. how? <laughs> or you could just like test it out, like become scientists and <laughs> test it out and see if that works. And if it doesn't, try something new. That's you our know? new thing, huh? Everything's a lab in, I know. in the lab. That's We're right. We're doing in it the in the lab. lab. Just yeah. testing it out. Yeah. Play it, that's playing all. around. That's our, that's our motto. We do things messy. So That's the only way to get it done. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Right? If you yeah. spend too much time trying, trying to make it perfect right out of the gate, it's just never going to get done. You'll yeah. never do yeah. it. And yeah. you'll be so frustrated. So might as well just have fun with it. and Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what right. I tell people. Like the first episodes of this were a, a total mess. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. And like I even had total fails where like the camera equipment shut down. And I just took a, a screenshot and, <laughs> yeah. and let it play with some of the backup audio I had recorded. And... Uh, yeah, I aired it anyways, you know, like, who cares, man? You, yeah. you got to move. Yeah. You got to just well, t tackle these hurdles one right. at a time, and it's going to be okay, and no one's going to care about the first 100 episodes you put right. out. Well, that's kind of what we've been thinking, too, you know. We've made a commitment to do it once a week. Yeah. So we'll test this out. Like, we did an episode where we wanted to figure out, see, play around with video. Yeah. So we just did it. And the sound quality wasn't the best, but we still posted it. We had one the other day that we tested out a new, few new things and, you know, we just were committed to it. So yeah. we'll post it anyway. We're doing it messy and we'll get better as we go. I think I have that, right? That YouTube video oh. that you did I was talking about earlier? Oh, Is yeah, that right we here? do. Yes. Yeah, that's right here. Oh. So in a nutshell, really fast, let's talk about spring is... Color with I love white the added shirt. to it. So it's bright colors. <laughs> awesome. And springtime is animated. It changes its mind often. It snows, it rains, it blows, and sometimes all in the same day. And it, it the that's, little that's shapes Marcy's of nature sister. that come the first thing. Is that Marcy's sister? That's my like sister. The that's awesome. They have yeah. rounded edges. She wrote a little so uh, lots of a circular book on shapes the fashion screen. revolution. That's so lots of circles. And it's oh, really? Animated. Yeah. <laughs> so she's an author, huh? She is an yeah. author. So we played around with video there, and we just decided to record our Zoom. <laughs> and that was it. Hey, and you we got had a YouTube never video done... out of the deal, <laughs> right? right? I know. Uh, that's, just, that's just play. I think it would be so fun to really... I, I think I'm going to do a little Skillshare video uh, class. Oh, do it. And yeah. I think okay. My dream is to <laughs> is this year. dream coach is to <laughs> learn how to do those drones. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. They look so cool. Like th just the images you can get. I just really like that look. Um, so, you want me to give you a pointer on how to get going on that dream? Yeah. So yeah. if you were a drone filmmaker. What would be your first step uh, if you were acting it out? You were I creating would, your script. Uh, maybe look into because I don't know anything about drones. 
that's the thing. So maybe I would look into like a little class or yeah. I looked in equipment. I don't yeah. I don't want to buy, you know, the very good ones because I'm a beginner. <laughs> You'll crash your first one. Right. You want to get a cheap yeah, one. Yeah. Do you have one? I've gone through several. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're fun to play with. For uh, yeah. Sure. They are. I want to get a cheap one that I can, you know, just play around with. Yeah. So, Joanne, as soon as you buy one, you're a drone flyer. Yeah. <laughs> What's the right? name? What, what is the pilot. official name? It's actually a oh, pilot. A pilot. A pilot. I have you're a, a drone couple pilot. friends in the industry that do that for a living. That's and so we'll, cool. you know, as yeah. a side, side hustle. And uh, it's the really good money. But uh, you do, you got to get a pilot's license for the drone. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, because yeah. there's certain to do it professionally, oh, yeah, and carry right. insurance I've and all that stuff. I've always wondered that too. Like, what about you know the airplanes or how high can they go? Cause sometimes some of the footage I, I see, there's this one girl. She, her name's Kylie Flavella. I think she does a lot from Italy. Yeah, and she has a drone, and I'm like, I'm looking, and I'm like, how high can that thing go? Can you imagine? You're like, it looks high, and she's uh, like on the ocean, and. I was like, Man, yeah, it, it gets can go scary high. too. You get a, you get them up there, and the wind is moving it, you know. And you're like, yeah. oh man, I need to bring this thing down because it is. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. lose control of it. It's gonna just end up somewhere like way away from here. Yeah, yeah. well, and then you you have to be able to see it where it's going. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, how do you keep track of where it's going if it's so high? Um, usually, um, some of the better ones you can have a, a screen, so it's like a, f a first person view of the camera that you have attached to the drone. Yeah. And so you can see it on your controller and you can actually okay. pilot the drone from your controller just okay. looking at your screen. I see. Um, but they also usually they'll have like lights, so they'll have like red lights for the back and white lights for okay. the front so you can see which direction it's moving. But uh, no, I, I ended up getting a DJI Pro and. Uh, I didn't know how to use it, and I took it right out and started filming with it and testing stuff out, and it just ended up taking off and shooting <laughs> right into a tree, <laughs> and I had no idea what happened. Oh. Like, I was I was doing great piloting it, and I guess when it, the battery runs low, it has this return to home function <gasps> where wherever it lifted off from, it saves a GPS coordination really? for that, and then it goes, my battery's running low. I better get back to where I took off from. And oh. so it just, on its own, turned around and just no way. started That's... flying, ran right into a palm tree at like 50 feet in the air and crashed into the ground. Oh, almost, no. hit a, almost hit a homeless person. I was filming on Venice Beach, which oh. I found out later is super illegal and I should not have been doing. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's uh. Brayden, my son. <laughs> <laughs> he had a, the, one of his first drones. I think he kind of got in trouble for flying a drone because you do have to have like a license to fly something like that oh yeah i'm gonna learn then what in italy <laughs> should, <laughs> should how, find the rule what is the, the what's rules. a safe way to do it <laughs> yeah yeah now i recommend getting like a hundred dollar one that you know there's like even cheaper ones than that but you can get a decent little one that's about so big for about 100 bucks or 150 bucks and it'll do all the tricks you can get it to do backflips and stuff like oh. that and just kind of get comfortable moving yeah. And piloting one and crashing it a couple times because you'll lose control and you'll be like, oh, well, it's only the, it's not the $700 drone that's got the HD camera on it. Right. It's just this little toy one that I can kind of, yeah. you know, get my training wheels going. Because uh, that, that definitely happened. I was trying to teach Angela how to fly it. <laughs> and I'm like, you're getting close to that tree. And she's just like, uh, I'm going to just, I don't know. <laughs> Right in, the, right in the trees constantly. Oh, my. And, yeah. uh, and so, yeah, those they, you go through them. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I learned the hard way with that DJI Pro. Once I upgraded to a, an expensive drone, that they have some pretty cool features that I was not you know, aware of how they functioned. Yeah. I was thinking when I was reading, I was thinking it was going to come back to the controller that I had. Mm -hmm. and But it actually mapped out the the location that it took off from and went back to that, that is, which oh, I found out that's later. That's so fancy. Yeah. That's so fancy. Yeah. What were you using it for? I, I was just trying to get shots. So I was like filming, um, I was filming the ocean with it and getting like some oh. shots down the beach and then we took it and I was doing circles around the, uh, the skate park that they have there. Right. Oh. And getting some shots of the skater kids and then from the skate park, it just went, I'm out of batteries and shot right uh, back to where I took they off. They should, if there's so many rules, they, sh they should be a school or something, huh? Oh, there's, de I'm there's, pretty sure there's there definitely some drone schools. School. Yeah. But my buddy Dave just got his drone pilot license and he goes out and does it. And uh, my friend uh, Katasco, who we've had on the podcast here as well, 
Um, he has a, a pilot's license as well to film drones. We're actually going to go out and do um, a rock climbing video. My buddy's <gasps> going to teach me how to rappel. Get out of here. Film all that. Listen, and he's going to film it with a drone. <laughs> Listen. If he would like another person to do that, yeah. I would love to do that. Yeah, you want to come rappelling saying. with me? Yes. You should. I want to so bad. Yeah. I'm just putting it out there because I believe in asking for what you want. So That's a good thing to do. There you go. I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> just throwing it out there. Well, that might be fun. You should come with us. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I'm curious about the rules of Venice. Like, why can't you? It's just, it's dangerous. And if you don't, you know, like, like, I, like. I said it took off and crashed into a tree and fell 50 feet to the ground. I see. Yeah. And that could have really hurt somebody. I see. And so it's it's really dangerous. And, like, you know, when people like me who don't know what they're <laughs> doing, flying this heavy object around people's I heads. See. and Yeah. Um, that makes sense. And it's, yeah. like, spy technology. You know, people want their privacy. You're just walking around with the camera filming everybody, essentially, <laughs> right. yeah. without their permission. All right. And so, like, it was really unregulated at first. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's like... Like right. everything, right? The technology outpaces the laws that we have. And so uh, people were just out doing all kinds of stuff. And, and then slowly the laws got put into place. And now it's really restricted and regulated. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even like the fun time drones where you're just doing backflips with a little toy. It's like this is you can't be just doing it in public spaces. You got to take it to like uh, special open areas to fly them around and yeah, stuff like that that makes sense so we have a little miniature airport actually out here by red rock really yeah it's a small runway for model planes i see people <gasps> doing what? Model planes. wait a minute what? i've seen that yeah. no it's way not like charleston way yeah oh like, that's uh, cool yes that's cool okay wow. i was wondering about that because i would i like to take my bike up there to that's ride around beautiful. so i did see something like that and i wondered oh yeah. cute. the runway <laughs> that's yeah. fun a little people take their little model planes out and yeah. they're out there fun. those things are super cool too yeah. like they're really impressive what they can do with them yeah and that i i definitely recommend if you end up getting into the drone thing Go out to the the runway out by Red Walk, or go to an open park or something like that, where you got a lot of space to crash it and and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and fly it around. Because yeah, they they get out of control really fast, and they'll start you know moving yeah. this way and that yeah. way. Oh wow! So, huh. The other thing I recommend is find one that does an auto hover, so it'll you don't have to sit there and try to. Balance, oh, balance oh, yeah. it. Like I got a, uh, I got a Millennium Falcon one as a gift because I oh. love Star Wars. Yes. And I'm, I'm a nerd. I like the drones thing. But it doesn't, it just, you have to keep it, mom, keep momentum going on it, mm -hmm. or it just f drops to the ground and crashes. Oh. And so there's certain ones that you can turn them on, and then they'll lift, and they'll just stay right there. And you don't have to touch the controller or anything, and it'll just stay hovering. And now yeah. you can move it forwards and backwards and up and down and start doing stuff with it. But if it doesn't have that basic stabilization, mm -hmm. man, they're really hard to fly. <laughs> that's, mm, that's good to know. That's fun. Mm. Yeah. That's like the bare minimum I'd recommend whenever you're looking into one. Yeah. Because mm. yeah, otherwise it'll just you're gonna, it's not gonna it's not gonna be fun. It's gonna be discouraging trying to get it to do what you <laughs> want it to do. Uh, that's a that's a fun thing, Joanne. I'm cheering you on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet I can find some uh, pilot license uh, so programs here. I think they're yeah. I think I might have listened to something on the radio, and they I think they or something they were talking about little advertisements about little schools or something <laughs> that's fun well you know i like to have somebody show i'm more of a show and well you know show me hands on show me how to do it and i'll do it oh yeah i'm like, like that too. reading reading a manual <laughs> yeah i'll get something in the mail and i'll be you know texting one of my kids can you please tell me how to do this have you read the manual <laughs> No, we no. don't want to read I the know. manual. I'm, I'm coming to learn about myself that I like a program. <laughs> I like to have a program, yeah. like, a, you know, classes and stuff yeah. like that. So. Yeah, I'm a hands-on um, girl. Yeah, it looks sure. like um, you can sign up for June 5th <laughs> right here. Uh, it's $1,500, though, oh, to get a, a two-day course, to get uh, all your certifications. <laughs> Then you're a oh, pilot. Or a drone pilot. Then you're a pilot. That's drone good to know, though. DroneAviate.com. Yeah. Maybe in the future. <laughs> if you learn how and then you become and a you, pilot. And you have your pilot license. Yeah. That's good. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. The people map out construction sites and, and 
they uh, film uh, large buildings and stuff like that. And oh, yeah, so there's yeah, a lot, yeah, There's yeah. a lot of stuff you can go out and, and actually make pretty good money doing just random oh. stuff with it instead <laughs> of just filming nice things. It's your side hustle. Oh, my side hustle. Yeah, it's a good side <laughs> hustle. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm open to new dreams. Right? <laughs> Why limit yourself to one thing? Right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's the, you know, living the dream and uh, making your dreams come true kind that's, of thing. That's exactly right. In this day and age, you can do anything. Absolutely. Yeah. And if if there isn't a, a thing, a thing you make you it a thing. It. You make it a thing. Yeah, that's how the world runs. Right? right? That's the best way to do it. Yeah. Hmm. Like making one of those vacuums. Those vacuums. <laughs> those robot vacuums that, that can, vacuum stairs. <laughs> that can hover. That's a good idea for anyone. <laughs> yeah. If you can come up with a robot vacuum that vacuum stairs, you will be a millionaire yes. very quickly. It's a brilliant idea. I will. I would buy one right away. Me too. Yeah. I don't have yeah. stairs, so... <laughs> That's also but. a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for the knees, not to climb up and down those stairs all the time. That's yes. right. Yeah. That's right. Huh. Yeah. So, Jason, are you are you living your dream? I'm doing my best to live my dream. You uh, look is, like it. This kind of thing I is know. my. You know, it I really love really having this facility, and you have a really nice place yeah. here. Thank this you. It's a nice studio. You know, nice studio, nice setup. Yeah, we've been working on this place for a long time, and full audio and video and everything like that. And, uh, and you I have, don't know, I've been building it since I was in my early 20s yeah. in college and stuff like that. You have a band here, too, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, uh, I play you? a lot of different instruments. And uh, we uh, I was playing before COVID happened. I had a Primus tribute band. I don't know if you're familiar with the band Primus. Yes, you know Primus? I can totally see you as a Primus yeah. band fan. Yeah, we had um, a band. It's called Blue Collar Bastards. And uh, here, I actually, I can pull something up for you real really? quick. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, uh, yeah, we did a Primish tribute out here in Las Vegas, and we had a lot of fun with it. Oh, I'm so sorry. I yeah. missed that. Yeah, it might come back. I might not. I don't know. I could, right now, I'm kind of at the I did that phase of my <laughs> life. But, uh, but you never know. It was, it was so much fun to uh to play my favorite music and yeah. actually present myself with that kind of a challenge because it is a big challenge to put a, a band together that can perform those songs right yeah so yeah we had a lot here i got this uh let's see here oh i'm so excited i got uh winona's big brown beaver oh boy <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Look at you. Me and my uh, my buddy Polly D playing drums, and my buddy Anthony playing guitar. What? What? <laughs> Get out of oh here! Oh my gosh! Stop it! Super fun. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, we did. Uh, oh, wow. This is a club I used to run as well, and. Uh, oh my gosh! You nailed it. Yeah, you I worked really it. hard at it. Look at that beard! Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was down past my chest. I had the big. Uh, I had the big uh, mustache and everything with the curly cues. <laughs> I heard I heard you had long hair. So when I met you, you were clean shaven. Like you didn't yeah. even have. I don't think you had any facial hair at the time. No, I was doing uh, a lot of corporate events. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so I I went super corporate. I cut my hair all off and I shaved my face and I was wearing a blazer, suit and tying it up and all that to uh, compete because it was uh, I was like an independent contractor. So we're all cutthroat in each other trying to yeah. get all the gigs as much as we can and so who can bring the most gear to their job site and who can look the sharpest and everything mm -hmm. it all make it all adds up to getting the gig and uh and yeah i got to let all that go again because i'm really not a 
a shave your face kind of guy. <laughs> I, I like your look right now. Yeah. This is nice. The beards wow. are like a thing now, huh? Yeah, I guess. And they, you, for a while. you do a beard really well. Thank you. I like it. I like it too. I especially like not shaving. <laughs> <laughs> I like yes. not having to maintain the yeah. face. It's great to just let it grow. So does it get itchy in there? In the beginning it does. And then like once you get past a certain phase, it's... And it's really comfortable. You just condition it a little bit, make yeah. it soft. So yeah. do you find yourself playing with it a lot? Oh, yeah. I find I find Angela playing with it a lot more than <laughs> I do. I was I just going to say, <laughs> I love playing with the beard. Yeah. I love the beards. She's always uh, she's always grooming me and picking at <laughs> yeah. me and finding uh, finding gray hairs in there. Oh, I yeah? She's just planting them. Stop <laughs> it. Not, those aren't real. She's <laughs> just doing sleight of hand to fool me. Yeah, I don't believe it. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy how fast that starts happening in life. Right. But you're but, so young, right? I, yeah. I was listening to your podcast, and there, you guys were talking about Star Wars. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, and I was like, I remember going to the... You know, how exciting it was to go. And you were born in 85? 85, yeah. yeah. Like he's a youngin. Nice. <laughs> that yeah. was an amazing year. I, I, I agree. 1985 was like probably the best year. Was ever. it? <laughs> really? <laughs> because Jason yeah, <laughs> came right? into the world. Yay. It was pretty cool. I like uh, coming from the 80s, too. It's kind of yeah. an interesting perspective of reality, man. You're like... Uh, the 70s being the, the, uh, the past, you know, all that, and yeah. uh, just the world in general. Like, what a crazy time for entertainment and, and politics and all that kind of stuff to come out of that era. Yeah. Uh, I just, yeah, I really appreciate it. <laughs> and, like, the, the advent of the Internet was kind of just as I was coming into my own, like, reality of, like, actually <laughs> yeah. being a person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we I grew up with the original Nintendo system, right. so yeah. now like me and my friends, we we appreciate all the gaming stuff that we can do. We we love the internet and like the speeds that you're capable of, all the cool things right. you can do with it. I remember just like trying so hard to get online and this cool new thing, and oh, wanted geez. to be a part of it, right. and just Look. just waiting for you know phone modems to dial in. Remember when it would like. Yeah. yeah. It was a separate was thing like a you had to attach to your phone. <laughs> yes. You know, I am a girl of the 80s, but I yeah. played Atari. You oh, know. yeah. I'm Atari. You didn't, like, connect with anybody online. You had your friends come over and play in your Pong. living room. <laughs> yeah. I loved my Atari. That thing was great. Yes. Yeah, we used to, uh, we even used to rent uh, a game system from Hollywood Video or Blockbuster. Right, yeah. yes. You can go yeah. buy the new system. Yes, yeah. yes yeah. we did that too. That was oh great. Goodness. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, freaking Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. Oh my goodness. Did you see the documentary on the last Blockbuster up in Oregon? No. no. There's only one left. And no. they're just, it's kind of a... Uh, That's they're never yeah. closing their they're doors. They're hanging on. Yeah. They're gonna they're hang on, on forever. Yeah. Are they really? Wow. It's the only one that exists. So uh, they keep getting renewed once. Again. I don't know. That, I don't know if it's still there or not. I wish to watch the documentary a little while ago. But uh, yeah, they held out. There was one in Alaska and yeah. one in Oregon, and the one in Alaska <laughs> closed down. Oh, oh. Is there enough people? I in know. Alaska? In Alaska. <laughs> just right? kidding. I guess that's why. I'm just kidding. But the the crazy hippies in Oregon, they're all into that stuff. Yeah, you know, keeping it up, weird, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you go up there and they got like cassette tape shops and yeah. you know, they got VHS rental and uh, all that old school wow. kind of um, reminiscent. There's a the word that my brain's not pulling up. But yeah, the uh, the classic stuff from your past kind right. of thing, you know. Yeah, they love that shit. So it's... It's fun, man. I'm glad to see at least one Blockbuster still up. And I still have I mean, my old Blockbuster, your blockbuster card. card. <laughs> yeah. Oh, get out of oh. here. Uh. Yeah, I got rid of mine a while ago. Hollywood video. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, I had all of them. Wow. <laughs> have you been to Alaska? I haven't. I really want to go on a cruise up there to so do like some whale watching and yeah, so see the I. ice. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's supposed to be just some of the most beautiful countryside on the planet. Yeah. And uh, we really love doing the nature thing and, and doing the camping and hiking and everything. So I, I definitely intend on going up. Have you been to Alaska? I, ha I have not, but I've been watching Northern Exposure. Oh, have really? Have you seen that? No. -uh. Well, that's from clear back then. 
you know, back in the... <laughs> oh, wait, is that that old sitcom? Well, was it, or a, yeah, well, sort yeah, of it TV took... TV show? Yeah. Yeah. With the moose walking through town, yes, I think? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh. Yes. I've never yeah. seen it before. I just started watching it, but it's great. Okay. It makes me want to go to Alaska. Uh. Only to visit. I could not live there, I yeah. don't think. But, no. you know... For like a visit, I would love it. <laughs> we, we took a RV trip, and uh, it was one of those. What, what's that vacation where they go and they okay, and then they turn around and they. We just like stopped in Alaska for like half an hour or something. And then oh, we, to say that you were there? Yeah, I don't know what it was. <laughs> Look at some totem poles, and then because oh. we were in a big like RV with my cousins at my, and then turn around, and come back home. <laughs> That's awesome. Trip. What was the uh, initial destination of the road trip? Well, we just went, this is when we were in L.A., so L.A. to San Francisco and just kind of up the coast. Okay. And I, so I liked that trip because we just kind of camped and went fishing and stuff like that. Kind of doing the one-on-one thing? It, it was my whole family, yeah. and it was a big camper, <laughs> you know, those big ones, and I remember how scary it was in San Francisco. It's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, all the hills trying to navigate with and the camper. And narrow and yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was a little scary. I wouldn't have even thought about that. Yeah. Oh yeah, San Francisco's the worst. Like I, I would, uh, we would go see concerts. I grew up in Northern California area. And so we'd go to San Francisco to see events. And it would be like the second we get into San Francisco, I am parking this car and we're walking. <laughs> oh. I'm done with this. I ain't messing around at San Francisco. It's a nightmare. Yeah. Well, because my. You get there faster by walking. Yeah. And my aunt and uncle, um, they live there. So that's why we went there. <laughs> I think otherwise we would have just kept going because, you know, but they live right in the city and we just barely fit in the driveway so ah. well that's the road trip that i want to take i want to go to san francisco and i want to ride the trolley and i want to <laughs> have clam chowder and the sourdough and yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah ride the crooked f- street yeah. or whatever it is yeah, yeah. Yep. go to fisherman's wharf yeah. and uh hate nashbury and all that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep, that's on my to-do list i loved it uh it's actually just a, such a beautiful city and uh we used to go, yeah, like I was saying, we used to go see bands, but there's nowhere for the bands to hide. So they'd have to park their bus like right on the side of the venue. Oh, and so we'd yeah. get to, when we were teenagers, we'd hang out and wait. We get to meet all kinds of musicians and rock stars oh. growing up as kids. It was super fun. So you're camping out by their trailer, oh, yeah. waiting for them to come home. <laughs> yeah. They, you know, we just hanging didn't... out. Uh. Yeah, we were we were super dork fans growing up, but it was, awesome. it was one of the benefits of going How to see fun. a show in San Francisco. That's fun. Yeah. So now I just work with them, which is yeah, crazy living the dream <laughs> kind that, of thing. Like isn't you're that wild? About. Yeah. yeah. You know, when you follow your dreams and all of a sudden it becomes a reality. That's right. awesome. Uh, How long have you been in Vegas? Uh, 2007. So I guess 14 years, going on 15 years nice. now. And uh, yeah, it's it's an awesome city to live in. I, uh, I would love to live around some water and trees, though. <laughs> oh, right. I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you can go uh, visit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we got Utah, so we go to Utah a lot. Yeah. Hang out by the lake and stuff like that. But no, it's a beautiful city, especially to do what I do for a living. Yeah, It's like one of the only places you can do it. This is a good place to be doing what you're doing. Oh, yeah. But have you ever, like, some of those people that you loved growing up and then you met them? Oh, yeah. So who is your... Who is your favorite? I actually got to work with Les, which blew my mind. I was terrified because... Um, I've worked with other people that I grew up with and are listening to, and they kind of put a sour taste in my mouth with their, their ego and their, yeah, right. their, you know, their ridiculous behavior. But <laughs> thankfully, Les was just the coolest guy ever. And uh, we were, I was working at the House of Blues, and um, the whole crew took the day off. Like, he came through, and we were like, they got the, the C guys, because <laughs> we were all like, we're going to get a table and get a bottle of vodka and yeah. just hang out and watch less play. Yeah. And then he had, uh, I mean, this is the caliber of the guy is we work with musicians all the time. We don't care. We don't care who you are. Right. But when Les came through the whole house of blues took the day off to watch him play. We came uh, into work for free and yeah. then we're all lined up with 
with uh, memorabilia at the edge of the stage as he's coming out of the green room every single tech and we're just like you're Les Claypool yeah and he was the nicest guy he could tell he wanted to get out of there he'd been there all night and uh he took time to take pictures with all of us talk to all of us and really like you could see he didn't want to be there because he had shit to do right and uh and he was just the nicest person about it and like yeah i just love that so that was one of my favorites uh getting to meet him that's yeah. fun yeah, yeah. That's nice good to for hear. you yeah. So, yeah he was cool but then there's the, the other side of the story right where <laughs> people are total total diva douchebags and you're just like i don't think i can listen to your music anymore oh, <laughs> yeah your idea changes <laughs> of them yeah. right you just put such a sour taste in my mouth man that's so that's kind of how when you see somebody like a movie star or something do an interview and you think Right. Hi, why did I have to see that? <laughs> because you so enjoyed them before, and then it does kind of do something to you, huh? Oh, yeah. And the yeah. opposite, too. Like, I've worked with uh, bands that before I didn't have respect for. Like, Godsmack's a great example of that, right? They're, for me, their their guitar riffs are so simple, and, like, they're literally just playing open chord yeah. for, like, a whole song. And I was just like, that's such hack uh, writing. And then I worked with them. And they were just awesome. And then they, their live performance, it was like, oh, this music is meant to be played live. Yeah. They are putting together a live show, and it doesn't really translate on the record. And so after I saw them yeah. live, I was like, I kind of I dig Godsmack now, and I totally go see them play again. Um, of course, I'm not putting the record on, but it changed my opinion of, uh, of uh, what they were as a band. Very interesting. And, yeah. It was more of an experience than, yeah. like, like, that's how they're... Hmm. They're not really studio musician types. The songs aren't meant to be studio songs. They're definitely just jam songs, and they're they kind of write them out. And it's more about the the rhythm and the the and vibe. And everybody gets going part and the crowd. of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting that way. Yeah, that's. So, and then you see the other side of it, which uh, which made me kind of glad. I used to, I used to always be kind of disappointed because I was a musician growing up and. I played in a bunch of bands and tried to do the whole let's get famous playing in a band thing. And um, and then I run into musicians that I've looked up to or that I just meet along the way who end up having a lot of serious issues because of the, the road and the lifestyle that they've chosen. And you watch these people kind of falling apart and being overwhelmed by the industry. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I'm mm-hmm. kind of thankful that, that my, my path didn't actually succeed going down that road because who knows where I'd be at at that point, you know? Yeah. Why should people deal with addiction and depression? Yeah, and right. They, like, live in a green room and they don't know how to take care of themselves. Right. And, like, they, I mean, if you didn't bring them food, <laughs> they wouldn't eat. And, uh, uh, yeah, and, like, you have to keep money away from them and keep drugs and stuff away from them and, like, kind of put a barrier of the, re- of the real world away from these people because they never developed these tech techniques to kind of like deal with the real world yeah and they'll just take all their money and blow it and they don't understand really the concept of like how to be an adult That's and there's a it happens yeah. to a lot of them especially the ones that become famous when they're like teenagers or the yeah. early 20s yeah and they never yeah. develop those skill sets and then they're shitbag people they're funny to talk to for a second but you realize their their sense of morality and and who they are as a person never oh. really got past like the high school level. Well, they don't yeah. have a, they yeah. don't no. have the opportunity yeah. to test those things yeah. out for themselves. It's all about their image and their you know how they perform. Yeah, so. and they get taken care of. And so I'm kind of thankful about that, where I I didn't end up in that position where mm-hmm. uh, where. I would have just been a shitbag. I was such a shitbag growing up, smashing guitars and partying all the time. And uh, that would have just progressed all the way through my life if I never had, you know. I don't know. Can you see that? Can you see that picture of you? (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, it's it's uh, it's definitely an interesting world to be a part of, though. I have to say, I'm I'm super glad of the path I've chosen, and you know, I always like to let people, you know, say like, you can do your kind of dream thing that you want to do uh especially if you're willing to sway a little bit you know like don't think that your dream has to be a hundred percent what you thought it was going to be it was like for me i i thought when i was a teenager in high school i was going to be this musician and 
work and you know playing clubs all the time and it's like i still get to do almost that scene but i took one step away from it to do the engineering thing and still be a part of the whole thing but now i consistently am the guy who gets paid yeah <laughs> right i have a career with it yeah. and i'm not uh I, you know and it's it's i always say like you try to get like a 70 30 compromise with it and you'll f end up in this nice sweet little pocket as opposed to thinking that you failed if you didn't hit 100 percent of whatever amazing like yeah. pie in the sky dreams that you've gone for and it's like it doesn't have to always work out perfectly you know, I, there's, yeah. I feel like it does work out perfectly yeah. though because not everybody can be the sound guy and not everybody can be the drummer yeah. I love the drummer, by the way. I <laughs> always love the drummer. He's my favorite. But not everybody can be the drummer. Yeah. And so failure comes in when you have this expectation of how it should be, and then it doesn't end up how you wanted it to be. But maybe it was just meant to be this way the whole time. Yeah. So the more you know, the better you know, you know. Yeah, that's sort of what I'm getting at. You yeah. know, I, I, I had, there's, and I see it with other audio engineers as well who think that they were going to be a musician and then they're embittered because they were only going to do this engineering thing for a while. But it's like you're a lot better at this than you are at being a musician. Yeah. And, uh, and so maybe this was kind of your end goal all along. Right. And just kind of be like, that's a good thing as opposed yeah. to thinking that it's, uh, you know, like a, a B option it's right. it's yeah. really what was supposed to happen all the time because mm -hmm. i've definitely always been more of the technical guy i love playing music but uh i don't think i'd ever really be as happy doing the musician thing as i am doing the engineer thing yeah otherwise i'd still be pursuing it right right, right. well the more you know you know the more you know what you want yeah so so it's like um like i talked to angela about it right she really loves the photography thing but it's like you can't just take pictures of stuff you like all the time. Maybe you got to move your thing into where you can make money doing certain aspects of it, like what we're doing with uh, yeah. Yeah. the photo studio upstairs and the podcast. And it's like we're still using our camera equipment. We're still mm -hmm. doing photography and we're making money with it. We're, you know, it's it's not 100 percent the pie in the sky dream that you had initially, but it's a success yeah. all the way around where you're living your you're living your dream you're doing the thing that you wanted and you're making money and it's real yeah. it's like real yeah and that's the hardest part for uh i noticed for a lot of people they get so wrapped up in the the hundred percent of what they thought that whatever it was was going to happen and it's like it turns into this thing along the way right and you got to love and appreciate that thing right for, and it's still going yeah like even your creation right now of what you're doing now we're we're still watching the show right you know who knows what's gonna happen next week i you know hopefully <laughs> something great hopefully i get my uh hopefully i get my auxiliary videos the whole meditation yeah. and the, the yoga videos and stuff out finally i've been oh. working on those in the background and they are a pain in the butt to get off the ground i keep having to come back to this version of it right it's all <laughs> like i said it's the compromise thing it's like I want to do all these things. So you've oh. created, oh. you've created yoga videos. Yeah, oh. we've, we've done a couple, and I and I hate the way they look. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, I we're working on polishing it up mm -hmm. and getting it to where it looks pro. Um, and for me personally, it was like I was trying to add too much stuff. I have all these automated camera jibs and uh these carbon sliders and gimbals and stuff and we're trying to i was trying to add too much motion yeah and like professional looking shots to which is should huh. essentially just be a couple cameras on tripods and i can do some zooming in or zooming out in adobe later in post if i need to yeah. move in and focus right. on a specific spot and so now we're going to just like stand stagnant cameras on tripods get the shots and do the editing in post as opposed to try to make really nice shots. Uh, and, but we've shot several of them and, uh, yeah, I get them back in and I throw them in the editor and I'm just like, Oh my God, what was I thinking? Oh. But we look up on YouTube and there's not really good yoga videos on YouTube. It's, it's not really, I mean, I have, I have, uh, meditation videos I like on the page and yeah. I have, you know, other things that we want to build on the page, but, uh, I couldn't find any of the, the yoga videos that I really was like into where I was okay. like, I would do this yoga. 
Well, yeah, that's <laughs> where your creative part comes in. You get to create what you like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm excited to see that. Yeah, I'm excited yeah. to get it out there. Hopefully it does well. Because I think it's definitely something that's missing on the, the YouTube platform is legitimate, like, really good yoga videos. Yeah, and I think once you listen to what... Because there's... The audience is so broad, you know? Because... And whatever you would want to watch, like there are other people in that same, you know, yeah. that have that same feeling. Because I think, um, you know, the yoga with Adrian, that that YouTube channel is very popular, but uh, is it's it? popular with its maybe probably certain demographic, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, whatever you you look around, you can't find anything, and then you start creating it, and I'm. Pretty sure <laughs> that Absolutely. there are tons of other people who want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, this is this is exactly what it, I always see. Is uh, it's always just it's a very simple. Like, yeah, it's a chicken yoga pants <laughs> and her living room. Listen, if you're sure. Um, yeah. So we're we're doing like nature videos with yeah. the yoga and trying to do more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like classic kind mm -hmm. of yoga ideology with it um but yeah i mean this stuff's great for sure for sure it's great but if you have but those other I, shots I, I don't really yeah for me like being a being a guy i, I don't really want to watch right. her do like right. do the yoga thing <laughs> look right exactly <laughs> i feel like a kind of a goober doing doing the yoga with uh the, the stay-at-home mom kind of attitude well because you're not know, this, yeah. you're not the stay-at-home yeah, mom yeah exactly. but yoga with adrian the reason why i by the way i love yoga with adrian i am yeah. a fan of hers yeah. Let's just be clear on that. <laughs> She's got a lot of fans. <laughs> so she does. Yeah. But, but one of the things that I, the reason why I like yoga with Adrian is because she's got her dog there <laughs> and she's not serious. Like yeah. she's like, you know, you're doing a little downward dog and then the dog comes in, you're doing the downward dog with the dog and <laughs> she's joking <laughs> with, you know, so that's kind of why I like her. But I totally understand what you're saying about being out with nature. And there's a call for that. Yes, totally. There is a call for that. And you should absolutely do it. And I would yeah. be part of that, too. I would watch that. Yeah, that's the, that's the number one thing I get from people who talk to me about it. Yeah. Is that, yeah, it's the... I don't know the whole scene of it. I feel they feel like it could be. I I definitely feel like it could be produced really well. I think that's a great I idea. Try to get it done, and then yeah, she's got millions of people watching these things. I would like to have millions of people watch. See, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you just have to create it and yeah. get yeah. it out there. So yeah. are you be doing? Yeah, are you doing the yoga or are you the the film crew? No, I'll be doing the. I do a lot of yoga and uh, I do my weekly yoga, and I'll be doing basic stuff for beginner people at first, uh, just to get people out. There's so many people I talk to that want to do it, and uh, and then like this kind of thing where it's that it's these are all this is everything that I always ever find is the yoga videos right. is the the They're chicken, doing and, it chicken in their living, living room, room on the mat, yeah. and a lot of my friends don't really feel comfortable with that. A lot of the well, you know, like like guys don't really right. feel comfortable doing it that way, right? And uh, and so I'm trying to provide something where people feel a little more uh, connected, connected, yeah, yeah. earthy, out get there with the trees with and the even sticking your toes in the grass yeah. and dirt. And, and it looks beautiful, and we'll make it sound beautiful, and and yeah. so we're trying to do a really nice like produce nice. thing with it but nice. uh yeah it's the problem is i'm such a, a diva about the way it looks because i really want it to look good right out of the gate well, and so i keep canceling it or like keep you should take on the you should one, take on our one. you should take on our motto and do yeah. it messy <laughs> yeah and that's what i've did for everything else yeah see and, it worked uh, for you with that yeah so we're gonna the next one we're doing it's going up no matter what do we got, it. We got a trip planned and awesome. we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put it up. Yes, oh, right. do and, it, and uh, then I'll try I to get one up a month at least. You should oh, let nice. us know. We will become your number one fans. Oh, thank you yes. so much. Yes, I, I do want to get back that. to yoga. Yeah, I'm that's not this, so important. I guess I'm not the studio kind of yoga girl. You know, I will. Yeah. I will do it all. Yeah, <laughs> I will do it all, and I will make up my own stuff too, just yeah. to do it. You know. Yeah, it's it's the it's one of the best feelings. I love my yoga days. Yeah. It's uh and I really wanna share that with people who 
feel like they can't do it or uh, they don't know how to do it or some some of it's like too complicated and stuff. Mm -hmm. I really want to offer like a really uh, simple, easier way into the the shallow end of the pool kind of stuff. And then work your way up to some yeah, of the more complex yeah. things. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, it's we'll see what how it works out. But uh, I'm pretty confident with with what we're we have set up to do it. Like, but it's just getting it done. That's, just getting it done is the hard part. That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. I I like to hear stuff like that. So yeah, we're we're really Genuine. excited about it. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know what? We've been talking for an hour now. Wow. That goes by fast. <laughs> well, that was fun. Yes. I, I really appreciate uh, having you both on. Yes. Well, thank you, yeah. Jason. This was fun. Thank you for having to, us. Learning yeah. from the expert. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, if you if you have any questions, feel feel free to reach out, and I yeah. can help you out with some of the technical side of anything that you run into oh with goodness. your podcast. Oh wow. yes. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, wow. We can make sure that you guys get a yeah. get a really good product going. Uh, I definitely, I definitely like what you got, you're doing already. Like you have the voice. There's the oh. the uh, there's a really soothing tone to both your voices whenever you're doing your podcast, oh, well, and I think you really you. got a good image there. Awesome. Thank so, you. Yeah, right away when I put it on, I was like, this is this is gonna work oh, out well. Well, that's that's fantastic coming yeah. from you. I'm I'm happy. <laughs> Way to go, us! Way to go. Yay us! Yay us! So yeah, I really look forward to uh, to more from the uh, Y O U. Un or Y-O Unicorn Lens podcast. Yes, thank you. I'd love to thank my guests, Joanne and Marcy. Yes, <laughs> thank you, thank you. And uh, this has been To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Please uh, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, hit the bell, all that good stuff. Peace. <laughs> Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.